Hey guys, it's Bill from Improvanopolis, and I'm doing another Bill's Comedy Breakdown, and I'm going to be watching some uh, footage from a show we did, I think it was March 21st of 2019. So it's been a bit, but this game that we're going to be playing is called Toaster, and it starts off, it has four people, and the way that it works is whenever there's a ding, so four people starts down in kind of a crouch position, you hear the ding, whoever stands up, so if two people stand up, now they're in a two-person scene, and you hear the ding again, and then it goes to, let's say it's three people, so a three-person scene. Uh, it could be all four people, singles, so there could be 24 different scenes, and then what the team members have to do is remember what characters they were in all those scenes, so that if they come back with two people, they have to do that, they have to continue that scene or have it jump forward, but they have to, the goal is to be those those characters again. So I'm just gonna, going to start watching this, and... So this is, this is Toaster, anytime you're ready. Ooh. Oh, that, that's so scary, Jennifer, that's so scary. Brains. Yes, sure. Brains. Okay. You did. You do this every year. Brains. You do this. Oh no, brains! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, Brian. It's good. No, it's terrible. I keep so with that first scene, we had Irene and Pavan jump up, and what they did, what was really good, was Irene immediately jumped into this character that was a zombie-like character, and she kept walking towards Pavan. Now Pavan kept adding things. He named her. He called her Jennifer. Oh yeah, it's so scary. You do this every year. So now we have a relationship. They've known each other at least a year. Uh, then she, she makes a joke where she's like, oh, no brains. So it kind of creates this, these two characters that know each other and give each other a hard time because she then asks him, uh, what do you think? And uh, do you like it? And he's like, no, I, I don't, at, which is, something there is something in improv called yes anding where you always yes and something that a give that somebody gives you and even though he said no it's it's an okay no because it's furthering the story because there still has to be conflict you can't just always agree with everything in a sense you can still agree with the reality of a thing but you don't have to agree or you can agree with what is given so if somebody says hey we're on mars you can't say we're on, you can't say, no, we're not on Mars. Uh, you'd want to say, yeah, we're on Mars and the, the weather sucks. So you could disagree with, an, uh, do you love it? No, I don't like it. It's, it's horrible. There's nothing out here. So you can disagree with a person, but you, can, you always have to yes and them. So they, they started that uh, off very solid and two, two new characters. So uh, that was good in the sense that he, he was the only one who popped up. So then he had to create a scene and it was a single scene. So he made the choice of, oh, that, that dreaded question that happens on Halloween. Because the give for this was Halloween. I don't know if I mentioned that. Uh, a lot of times with this, we like to ask for a holiday. So with that, we got Halloween. So then he's just asking the age old question, what am I going to go for this Halloween? Some people plan in advance. This character didn't, like many of us, like I would have done. And he's like, well, I could ruck up myself. Ah, no, that won't work. And you can, you can hear people chuckling in the background uh, or in the audience because it's, it's just setting up. It doesn't have to be crazy, but it's, it's, it's truthful. And right at the end, he's, he made a comment. He said, well, maybe I could just go as Dalsam. And I think he's referring to the character from, I think it's, not Mortal Kombat, but the other, Street Fighter. Uh, so Erwin has a shaved head, kind of like the guy in Street Fighter, so he just threw that out, and still what was cool about that is he was making a specific choice, right? So we'll keep going. Mom, Dad, um, <laughs> this son, this Halloween, uh -huh. I, I want to go with something. I want to go with a Disney princess. <laughs> I think it's a great idea. Yeah. 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 You'd be a great Disney princess. Great. Okay. So do we have a Disney princess dressed in 
my size? I mean, I'm wearing one, but I don't have any yet. I know, but I'm, I, I've been waiting for this. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Uh, so with this one, it was kind of a fun intro. Three people, that's three different minds thinking about three different things. Uh, a lot of times it's the first person to, kind of, to at least start to speak. Maybe they have a stronger uh, thought about it or they're just quicker to the punch. And with that, Pavan immediately started, or not immediately, we all kind of looked at each other for a second. So sometimes you don't know what to say, so you're kind of gauging what is popping into your head with three people and you could see that i kind of went to say something but pavin started so i gave him the uh gave him the floor and he said i you know started off i want to go with something different and then but he first said mom dad so immediately that named who irene and i were and irene did a great thing she kind of stepped towards me then i stepped towards her and then she put her arm around me so that's a great way of establishing that we're two parents listening to our child. At this point, we don't know if it's a boy or a girl, but he said, he alluded to the fact that I want to go with something really different. So I'm assuming it was a little boy, could be. Does it, uh, so we kind of went with that. That was the first thing that popped into my head, that he wanted to go as a Disney princess. It's very specific. And uh, <laughs> so then once he said, what do you think? And, and then... I added, I've been waiting for this, so this is a family, and I've been waiting for, and then he said, do you think there's a dress, do we have a dress in my size? Well, I'm wearing one, and then I said, oh, I've been waiting for this, and then I give him, here's a dress, and it's in your size. Uh, even though he's standing there just as tall as me, you can imagine that maybe he's, he's smaller. Why not? And Irene, Irene did something great in that. She didn't really add anything vocally. She did, like, uh, add... Oh, you know, little ahs and stuff just to add to it. But she took kind of a back seat. And sometimes you have to do that in a scene to kind of fill, fill it. But she was always active, always reacting. So she, even though she wasn't saying, any, saying anything, she was still adding to the, to the scene. So I've watched these uh, several times, and I'll, I'll say, so with this one, uh, and I'll say this about myself as well, I think this one, it was the least fleshed out right at the beginning. I mean, to a certain extent. Uh, Irwin asked a question that was kind of open-ended. Open it's not a... It's not a game ender for a scene, but what you want to do is you want to, if you're going to be the one talking, you want to endow. So he could have said, he just said, what is that? So then it had to be put on me and I kind of went with my first instinct, which was, uh, <coughs> I'm not wearing, what, what? And I kind of changed my body language to show that, well, I'm not wearing a shirt. I'm just going to be a guy who doesn't wear a shirt on Halloween. Uh, and then... With then it kind of picked up in the sense that he he added well that it's such high school great effort, uh, but we didn't I didn't really add anything more. I'm just like I'm one of those dudes. I'm one of those guys. Um, I could have been more specific. I could have said, uh, Hey, when I'm going to the the high school ball, I want the, the the chicks to dig me or whatever. You could have made a or the college party um, or been a little more specific, but. Sometimes that happens, and maybe we'll see these guys. We'll see these guys in the future here. So with that, with that scene, uh, Irene made the three of them hopped up. 
and they have to make a quick choice. So now it's three new people, so we have to think of a new scene. So Irene went with, a, interestingly enough, a very f- a physical choice uh, right off the bat. C- not exact, kind of, but in the, still in the same kind of mentality of the, the zombie. She went with scaring them. So at that point, she could have been a lot of things. But we kept learning about it. She scared them, scared them again. They both reacted, which was great, which just adds to the realism of the scene. They're, they're honestly, like, scared. Uh, and then Erwin says, hey, we'd just like to get by. And then as the scene progresses, he's like, Pavan starts questioning, well, you're not even dressed up. So now we immediately see just uh, a person, uh, a woman, who's not dressed up, but who's trying to scare people. And then Pavan adds the specificity of, you're a salesperson behind a counter. But then Irene comes back and says, who is a witch? And... Because at that point, now you're like, maybe she's just trying to get customers. Maybe she's just, maybe she didn't have time. Or maybe she is literally a witch, a Wiccan, and is, but doesn't have to dress up because she doesn't, she doesn't feel like she needs to. So. So, so with this one, uh, so now we start off three new characters. We haven't really repeated at this point. Uh, so we got three new characters. Pavan jumped in with, hey, it's Halloween's perfect time to rob a bank. That made me think of, oh, I'm wearing a mask. So I took it off to speak. And Pavan is like, well, I've got my mask. He's got his mask. And then I, I say, Oh, that was your mask? Yeah, I go with Saad from from uh, Superman 2, which is kind of similar to what Irwin did earlier with the Dalsam. I was kind of in that moment, like it just happened to kind of fit, is that time my beard was short, my hair was pulled back, kind of slicked back like uh, Zod in Superman 2. So it was a very obscure reference, but some people will get it. And if it makes you kind of, ch- if, it, if it adds to the story. So then... It, so then it, beyond the fact that we're trying to rob a bank, you have Irwin who is like, I didn't get the memo. I'm not on board. So he's yes anding us, but through, it's not like he said this never happened or it's not happening. He's still going along with it, but he's disagreeing with us. He's creating the drama of two guys who want to do it. One guy who's like, ah, I don't want to. And then Pavan added a great thing of, um, haven't you been checking your WhatsApp? Just something so simple, like these guys have been WhatsApping each other about doing a bank robbery, robbery, just making it kind of mundane. Like it's that's their life. That's what they use WhatsApp for. I use it for, you know, meeting up with friends, chatting with friends, and these guys use it for that. And then Irwin, yes, ends it with a great, uh, no, I have it on mute. So <laughs> it's pretty fun. <laughs> That one was great. That was a uh, that was a fun one, and it took she took her time. That was the other thing with this. So Irene realized she's the only one up, so she's got to create a single person scene, and she just took her time, had something in her mind, went out with a, a finger pointing or kind of in front of her, and I think it took it even took me a second to kind of think, what is she doing? You know, yeah, as you're watching, sometimes you don't know what a character is doing. But then when she put her hand eye, hand over her eyes and was like, is anyone there? Everybody kind of got it that she's doing a solo Ouija board, which is funny in the sense that typically you do it with a couple people or three people to move it around. Uh, so that one was just fun. <laughs> Dude, seriously. Look, we're not right in front of the bank. I've got my mask, you've got your mask, you've got nothing. The camera's caught us. What? My, my, my dad works as a security guard for the bank. This bank? Yeah. So uh, I'm just going to walk away, okay? No, dude, we don't have to break in there. <laughs> we don't have to break in. You're thinking, man. Yeah. You are <laughs> thinking. No, dude, your dad has keys. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Come on, no, 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 no
So now this is when we're starting to kind of get the repeats. Uh, this was the first repeat uh, in the in the game. We're back to the the bank robbers. We've jumped into time. We're in front of the bank. Pavan points out he's got his mask. He's got his mask. You don't. There's a camera. What? Uh, and we, you know, the thing is, you never really know who's going to speak. So you're looking for social cues, and sometimes you don't have to necessarily speak. I just did a, a gesture kind of similar to Pavan, like, yeah, whatever. Uh, what are you thinking? And he still is still in the, I don't want to do this. I'm not into it. He, and then he, he adds a great give is, by the way, this bank, this is why my dad works as a security guard. As I think he was trying to say, basically, I don't want to do it because my dad works here and I don't want to get him in trouble. And I don't want to get in trouble. And we took it as, it was like, oh, oh, that's great. That's perfect. We don't even have to break in. Because in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, we can just go steal the keys from his dad. We can, then we don't even have to break anything. We'll just, we'll just walk in. And Pavin's like, yes, we're th you're thinking. And <laughs> we put that out there. And Irwin does this thing of, of reacting in character. It just be, no, I don't want to do it. And that's where it ended. So now we move on. So this was, was cute. Uh, you could immediately tell that they're playing younger characters just by the way that their kind of physicality. They both kind of took on this, I don't know who did it first. It might have been Irene and then Irwin just yes-anded that physically. And yes-anding can be that way. It can be agreeing. It can be entering into the world that, the, that someone is creating. But they were both listening to each other physically and just in watching. So they yes-anded each other. And then uh, and again, kind of like the Dalsum, kind of like the Zod, this triple kind of came about because uh, what he's like, what do you think? And she's like, yeah, you look, you just, you look just like a pumpkin. And he's wearing orange, so it was just a happy coincidence, like the other two. And then he he made a great uh, give of yeah, well you're a you're a knife, you come as a knife, you can cut me. And this was kind of a triple callback where she did like this at him and scared him so she did that as the zombie as the witch and then now as a knife and she scared three people which comedy comes in threes i don't think it wasn't necessarily planned uh but it just it felt right it was kind of a neat neat uh neat moment <laughs> jimmy no what do you mean <laughs> Okay, so this one was funny for different reasons. This was this was on me, and Pavin comes in. We hadn't been in a scene together, and by this time you're trying to keep these scenes straight. Not that there's been a ton, but your brain's going all over the place. And Pavin said, "Timmy," and I'm I'm sitting there. And at first, I didn't have any physicality, and then I was like, "Oh, we're in, we're back in that scene." So, and I'm like, "No, no, I'm you know we're." we're here, we can go and doing the push-ups. So I'm back in the scene that I did with Irwin before. And what's really fun is it took me a while. I, I realized it before the end of the scene, before the bell, but I was trying to like figure out, okay, how do we, how do we move this into something different? But the other fun thing is, is the audience was enjoying it. The audience was laughing. They were laughing at the fact that we were making a mistake. So getting used to making mistakes and being okay is is a good thing because if you make a mistake if you make an error whatnot what i always say is it's like in baseball a baseball player like professional baseball players everybody's going to make mistakes and they call they call them errors in baseball 
but it's what you do after it. If, if that consumes you and you can't move on or you're stuck in that moment, now you're not being able to be in the moment again. So you have to find ways of shrugging that off, being like, yep, I made a mistake there, but I can, I can still make, a, make the next play, make the next play and be present in those. So that's a, that's a big thing to not get too hard on yourself. <laughs> so, um, where, where, where do you think we should go tonight? Uh, we, uh, we should go to that really scary house up there. Oh. At the top of the hill. Yeah, okay. Well, there's lots of people there. Oh, yeah, I see some people that aren't dressed like... Okay. Yeah, it'd be great. You well, can, I... you can cut people up there. Yeah. Shall we? There's some... So, so with that one, which was fun, is so we returned back to the little the the pumpkin and the knife who were out in the town, just trying to hang out, finding what's what they're gonna do. And so they say, well, what can we do? Well, let's go up to this to the top of this hill, and they react to it. They, it's kind of scary, and so that that they're also young, so they're adding this these elements. Um, and Irwin says something about the knife. Well, you, if you get up there, you could cut them. And so it's just playing into what, they, what they've been given thus far and what they've given. And then it kind of gets to this point, well, oh, if you're scared, well, maybe you could just hold my hand. And when, you, when you're listening to this one, people were just watching, watching what was going to happen, watch what was going to happen. There's a, a ton of laughter, but it's enjoyable to watch. Uh, sometimes I think people can get a little nervous. Oh, people aren't laughing. It's a comedy show and no one's laughing and then they feel like they have to push or they get nervous and that's what they're thinking about rather than just playing the truth of the moment. And the nice thing was is right at the end, he says, you seem, ner you know, it doesn't say it, but he physically says, well, you seem nervous. Well, I'm going to offer you my hand. And she reacts to that with this. Mm -hmm. And she get, they get a nice laugh right at that point. Um, just because of them playing the truth of it. It was, it was really nice. <laughs> Mohammed, do you know this guy? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is he doing in this house? <laughs> Wait, no one can run the page? Yeah. <laughs> so, so I, I, I kind of, I kind of messed that, the earlier one up. And so on this one, Pavan's still thinking, the, these me him and then Irwin's in this and he brings back that old scene which was kind of fun because then the audience knew that we were messed up again this time Pavan was like calling him which it was he was still being consistent he called him Muhammad so that's what he had referred to as his no I think you're talking about my roommate and he was so focused on that in that moment that he, had, he didn't realize oh this is the bank robbing scene which is totally fine because the audience was loving it. They were laughing about it. And then it, gave, it allowed me to say, no, no, dude, we're going to rob a bank. And it just felt like the right moment uh, where that was the button. No, we're going to rob the bank and scene. And that's, that's where we called it. So sometimes calling it what I tend to find, try and find is a button, a, a, the feel of the ending and to me, that's what, even watching it, I was like, that's, that was the ending. That was, that was the, that was kind of that climax of that moment. It's a, it's kind of a feel. And you're always looking for those in, in plays, not just abruptly ending where it just seems kind of nebulous, trying to find a conclusion to things. And it felt like that was a, an appropriate conclusion. So thanks for listening, everybody. This is uh, Bill's Comedy Breakdown and uh, take care. <laughs>